So we see turtles on the road all the time. We don't think about them. We just think they're stupid. Oh, we think they're stupid. Look at them on the road. Trying to thumb the lips on or what? So, but we don't think about why they're on that road in the first place. And so the worst part is, and this is good for you to know, people often rescue the turtles, rescue them right into a bathtub in their house or into a fish tank. Now, as new people, new, some of you new to Australia, it's important for you to understand all native wildlife in Australia is protected, all of it. You cannot kill it, you cannot keep it, all right? So if you find a turtle on the side of the road, you need to go, oh, take it home, put it in a fish tank, yay! That carries a, I don't know what it is, a $6,000 fine and a six-month jail sentence if they really want to have a go at you. Now, <laughs> our authorities in Australia are good. Honest mistakes are accepted. Um, you know, you're not trying to be nefarious, you're trying to sell the animals online, you're okay, but as soon as you do something like that, you're in trouble. But they're very intolerant about shipping animals in or out of Australia. Do not try to take anything home with you. Um, they do not allow native animals out of the country, carry massive fines, and a lot of their efforts are put into finding people trying to do that because they're worth a lot of money. And secondly, um, don't bring stuff into Australia from overseas. Our quarantine is very strict in Australia because we are a large island. We are protected from quite a lot of diseases and bringing uh, reptiles or pets from overseas into Australia uh, opens our animals up to, to being exposed. And in fact, one of the worst cases of, of that in Australia is um, uh, a disease called chytrid fungus, which is actually wiping out our crocs. So that was, believe it or not, brought into Australia by scientists by accident but that disease is ripping through our frog species and, and causing a lot of harm. So, so it's very important you understand those regulations. Find a turtle on the road, help it across, let it go. All right, it's not lost, it's just, it's just making its way. All right, now, um, when it comes to... All right, so what's the one animal that freaks people out the most in Australia? One reptile that has the best reputation? Snakes. So. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to show you a snake now. We fear snakes, we fear them because in Australia we love to go on about the fact that we have the world's most venomous snakes, and we do. They are the most toxic snakes on earth, all right? They don't have to sink their giant fangs into you and inject you with venom to have you curl up and die. They only have to scratch the surface of your skin and get their venom, which is a type of retro saliva, into that scratch. It happens very quickly. So why aren't we running around campus going? <laughs> because snakes don't have venom to protect themselves. All right, it works too slow. All right, it'd be okay if snakes were going around sacrificing themselves. You know, if that guy tries to kill me, I'll kill him, but I'll die, and then my friend will live. It doesn't quite work that way. Snakes have venom to catch their food. This is an animal that is on the ground, has no arms or legs and only has teeth and a venom that can take 10 to 30 minutes to work even on a small animal. So when they attack a rabbit, it's a bit like you going after an animal the size of a car, which has teeth this big and claws the size of butcher's knives. It's a very scary thing for a snake to do. So what they do is they hide. When their food goes past, they strike their food, get out of the way really quickly and wait. The food leaves the trail. As it moves, the snake follows the trail with his forked tongue, the animal passes out, he finds the food, he eats it, no competition, easy life, thank you very much. So why do we have some of the most venomous snakes in the world? Because we're Australia, woo! Yeah. Uh, no, it's not. Okay, um, because our food can be very few and very far between. So when these animals go to kill something, they usually get one shot at it. Plus, our little furry animals, those cute ones, they're not so cute. Um, we often think our furry animals are quite gorgeous, or we should like box them, you know. Um, but they're nowhere near as cute as you might think. Now, at the Reptile Zoo, oh, sorry buddy, can you come with me? Um, at the Reptile Zoo, we don't just have reptiles. <clears throat> we also have a few other creatures, because they're all important to each other. And it's important you understand these animals too, because I can tell you, we'll get these around camps. <clears throat> this little guy right here, he's very shy, is... I know, isn't he cute? Yeah, these guys are horrible. <laughs> they are disgusting little creatures. They some shit in your roof. They eat all your fruit. If you touch them, they'll take your arm off. Oh. No, no, they actually... This guy, oh, look. Oh, 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 you can't see him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
So this is actually, we going to love this, this is Sugar Glider. <laughs> Sugar Glider is in Australia and Nocturnal. This, is a, this guy is about eight years old, so he's pretty old. Um, they are very, very cute when they're small like this. They stink, they really stink. Um, and they actually, I thought that was super romantic. <laughs> I was just waiting for him to leave and hear a scream in the audience as he hit someone on the head. <laughs> when these guys want to move, they move fast and sugar gliders actually can open their arms and legs out and they glide, hence the term sugar gliders. Called sugar gliders because they're in sweet foods, uh, fruits and nectar and stuff like that, but they do love wheat bugs. Now, these guys make up the main food for things like snakes, all right? And as cute as we think that is, uh, to a snake, he's quite dangerous because he does have very big front teeth for gnawing. Now, the possums you're going to get around campus are brush tailed possums. I've seen them, there's a lot of them around. They are fed up, it's just all thing. Alright, you might see them, they're cute, they're not going to come and attack you, that's not going to happen, alright? In a bad mood, you may even not in campus. Um, don't approach them, don't offer them food, alright? When you do, they start to harass you. And not only that, if you do make contact with them, they do bite pretty hard. We don't really have diseases in Australia, like you don't have to worry about things like uh, uh, rabies and things like that, but, uh, but you don't want to get attacked, all right? So um, no matter how cute and cuddly you think they are, um, the mammals are the worst, leave them alone, all right? <laughs> so um, now, things like that are savage because they're avoiding things like this. Oh, okay. Now, I am happy to say, for the front row in particular, but this particular snake is actually not venomous. He's very typical in his body shape of a venomous snake because uh, venomous snakes tend to have a much smaller head. Uh, they tend to uh, look more like this. This one looks remarkably like a tiger snake, except tiger snakes don't actually have stripes, so it looks nothing like a tiger snake. Just confusing you there. Um, this is actually a black-headed python. They live in the centre of Australia, and he specifically hunts reptiles. That's his diet. Now, the one thing about snakes I have to show you, because this is the one thing that once and for all is going to put your mind at ease about being eaten by a snake, all right? They cannot chew their food. In fact, their teeth are quite fragile. So when they go to eat, they must extend their jaw and swallow their food whole. We all know that snakes can dislocate their jaw. It's not really, it's just, it's got a flexible ligament. And yes, it can open a heck of a lot more than we can open our own. But they still have to fit that food object in their stomach and they have to digest it without the mastication. So they're not chewing, they're swallowing and they're dissolving the food in their stomach as quick as they can. So they have a limit to what they can swallow. And I'm pretty sure that I would exceed that limit. Because there's no way I am going to fit inside that stomach. All right? And this is a pretty decent sized snake. There is no way the snakes in Australia are going around eating people. They just don't fit. If you don't believe me, try wearing your sock as a sleeping bag let me know how it goes. <laughs> it's not going to happen. So we get one large species of snake here in Australia. They're called scrub pythons. They aren't big enough to swallow a wallaby, but they still do not take on humans. There has never been a recorded case of anyone in Australia ever being eaten by a snake. All right? There have been deaths, but no one's ever been eaten. More importantly, pythons, which are non-venomous, uh, um, don't go putting people in hospital. That would be extremely rare. It's normally human stupidity that puts you in hospital, not the snake. Um, they are not out to attack you, and in fact, pythons are really awesome to see in the wild because they ignore you. So if you go down on the coast, you'll actually see diamond pythons, these beautiful big black pythons. Uh, if you're up uh, north of Sydney, you'll see pythons there too. They just tend to ignore you, and they tend to move right past you, all right? Now, I always get asked the same question. How do I tell the difference between a venomous and a non-venomous snake. Easy. If it bites you and you die, it's venomous. <laughs> so the best thing to do is avoid that at all costs. Don't ever assume that you know what an animal is from its colour, shape, or pattern. You just treat them all with respect. Venomous snakes tend to appear more aggressive. When they see you, they react much faster. So they tend to sit up, they tend to hiss, they tend to carry on. And the funniest thing about Australians is we always talk about Australian animals as uh, snakes as aggressive. Oh, they're really aggressive. They're angry little things. Sit up off the ground and yes, they, they lash at you. They're really scary. I'm going, really? So, wow. That looks more like he's freaked out. Because I have never ever seen a lion attempt to catch a zebra by leaping up out of the grass, roaring at it, and charging on its back leg straight for its prey item. When something sits up off the ground and it hisses, when it makes a lot of noise, when it balks at you, when it comes straight for you and makes a big loud noise and carries on, 
It is saying one thing only, bugger off. That's what they're doing. They're not angry. They're sitting up and they're saying, leave me alone, get lost, go away. That's what they're trying to say. If they really wanted to, you wouldn't see them coming. They wouldn't make a noise, you wouldn't hear anything, they'd just go straight for you. That's what crocodiles do. So these guys here are not out to get you, right? Okay? They just want to be left alone. So when you do come across a snake, particularly on campus or anywhere else, stand still. Just let it go about its business, whether it goes to sleep, keeps moving, whatever it is, let it move on. If you're really close to the snake, it will react to you. Uh, if it does, stay still, let the thing calm down, then move away quietly and slowly. Keep your eyes on it though. There's nothing worse than taking your eyes off and looking back and going, oh hell, where did that go? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but like spider and spiders and beautiful shirts. Yeah, so keep an eye on it. Um, never ever try to strike them. Um, I used to have a favourite say. <clears throat> back all those years ago when I did that show and the guy said hit the snake with a shovel. I said, no, no, that's okay. I, uh, I like snakes in Australia. One of the things I like snakes most, they eliminate stupid people. <laughs> okay? Snakes, when they strike their food, have one really good um, skill, that is to judge distance mm -hmm. and to move faster than you can blink your eye. That's how people get caught out. People who think they can catch or kill a snake will approach the animal and think to themselves, oh, no, I can do this and I'll try to pick it up with something or hit it with something. And as soon as you get within a certain distance of that snake, it will strike you. So if you stay calm and still and leave it alone, the snake will back down and move away. It takes an enormous effort for them to produce venom. And they don't like wasting it on you, all right? So you just need to let them go about their business. Now, in the event you are bitten by accident, and it does happen, because obviously snakes hide and you may not see them. So the important thing is to be snake aware. Even on campus, don't get running through the long. Um, when you're going bush, bike riding, or anything else like that, and believe me guys, the camera has some amazing bush walks. You need to go out there and enjoy them. Um, you've got a clear path, you're walking, you are totally fine. They're not gonna come leaping out of the bush at you, all right? But if you go off path, watch where you're stepping. Don't climb over logs, don't lift up rocks, and don't walk through long grass that you can't see what's on the other side, all right? Just be snake aware, it's pretty straightforward. They can't hear you, they can't see you coming. Your eyesight's not that great, their hearing is non existent. So they pick up vibrations on the ground and they're not picking it up as fast as you're moving. So, in the event you are bitten by a snake or if you are bush and you are struck by something, always stop, look back and make sure that you identify what scratched you. Okay, because I know of two deaths in Australia uh, that occurred because people were unaware they're bitten. It's not dramatic, it's just quick, you don't even realise. Alright, it's not even painful. You just feel nauseous and sick and then it's too late. So if you are bitten by a venomous snake, the first thing you do <coughs> is get out of your Google and say, Google, write a will. <laughs> I'll leave my TV to my nose. No, 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 it's pretty good. There are 3,000 snake bite victims in Australia every year. It's actually pretty high because there are a lot of people and a lot of snakes. Eastern browns are probably the ones that cause the most trouble. They are more eastern browns than any other species in Australia. Um, Eastern Browns uh, are, are quite venomous. Eastern Browns don't mean to bite you, they're just freaking out. And all you need to do if you're bitten by a snake is stay still, all right? I don't mean stand there until you die. I mean actually don't move around. Because snake venom in Australia moves in the lymphatic system under your skin. So what that means is the more you move, the faster the venom moves. It is not in your bloodstream. All right? If it was, you'd be dead in 30 seconds because that's how long it takes for the blood to move all the way around your body and back again. All right? So it moves under your skin. So when you're bitten, stop moving. All right? Stay calm. Get people to carry you if you have to. Call an ambulance to come to you. Don't try and get to help. All right? This is Canberra. There's no way they can't get to you in, in under 20 minutes. So you're fine. All right? um, put pressure on the bite area. Using a compression bandage or a bandage. If you're going bushwalking, you should always carry a bandage with you. Um, you just put the bandage on the bite area and you put it on firmly. Do not tourniquet your limb, all right? Don't go, I'll be bit on the arm and try and tie your arm off. <laughs> that will kill you much faster than the bite knot, all right? So, also, don't try and suck out the poison. Please don't try and do that. Okay? <laughs> not because it'll kill you. You can probably drink poison. It's okay. It's just, that, it's just that what they do, they need to know what bit you. And you do not want to pick up the snake and walk into a hospital and go, excuse me, this just bit you. <laughs> you can be the only person there, I can tell you that now. So, not only that, 3,000 people are bitten by snakes in Australia every year. Go to hospital. Only on average, 200 of those people need antivenom. 
Most snakes, when they bite you, it's a warning. They'll rear up, bite you. Most snakes get lost, and they'll keep the venom for themselves. They don't leave it for you. So don't test that theory out. <laughs> so you don't see it. What will happen then? <laughs> we'll see what happens. No, don't. Um, but treat it, everyone seriously, even if it doesn't feel that way. Put pressure on the bite area. Um, wrap it up firmly. If you don't have a bandage, then um, you can use a shirt or any piece of clothing. If you don't have that, stop running around the bush naked. <laughs> um, and get your friends to carry it. You'll be fine. You really will. And as I said, snake bites are very rare and, and it's not something you need to worry about in Australia. Just be aware of it. And, and be uh, and be safe, all right? So um, we're gonna let you touch this guy as well. He, he's very friendly. Um, no snake likes to be slapped in the face. So when you're touching him, the body, leave the head alone. Um, we do have some other remarkable animals here in Australia as well. Uh, I'm gonna show you one. Uh, oh, actually, no, I didn't forget. Oh, I didn't forget. Um, this guy right here, who's not wearing a harness right now, so you won't end up wearing it, um, is, So this little guy right here is often mistaken for an owl, okay? Uh, this guy's name is Muppet. Muppet. And Muppet here is a tawny frog now. Perhaps one of the stupidest birds on earth. But, <laughs> unbelievably, one of the most successful. They are prolific in Australia and they are endemic to every part of Australia. You find them just about everywhere. They're remarkable creatures. Their camouflage is unsurpassed. When they sit still on a log and point their head out, close their fur up against the fur, close their feathers up against their body, you, you'd walk right past them and you'd never know they were there. They don't even build a nest, they steal other people's nests, and if they don't have one of those, just lay an egg on a branch. <laughs> so, they're not an owl because they don't have talons. If I was holding an owl like this right now, his talons would have gone through my hands. Not only that, his beak, as sharp and nasty as it looks, cannot tear at flesh. Thank God. Um, owls can do a lot of damage. This is one of the animals we have in the reptile zoo. We also have an owl as well. They are nocturnal, and quite often you'll see these guys injured on the side of the road. If you come across any injured animals in Australia, there is an ACT wildlife care number that you call. Google, just Google it. ACT wildlife care. And there's a phone number, and people will come to rescue that animal. It is illegal not only to keep animals as pets in Australia, it's also illegal to remove them from the road, even roadkill. So the way the Australian government looks at it is if an animal is stupid enough to die on a road, then it probably deserves to stay there. And that's because it's a warning to other animals to stay away from that area. Also, a lot of predatory animals will eat those animals. It helps our own local system. But if you contact wildlife care, they will tell you what to do and they'll be able to help you out. Right. So he's another beautiful animal. You get to see those in our reptile zoo. And there's one last reptile I'm going to show you before I let you guys all come down and have a touch of some of these animals. Our last animal is the one that probably got me freaked out the most. <laughs> you got longer sleeves. You haven't trimmed his nails in a while. There's one guy that you probably will come across if you are camping or barbecuing in Australia. One of these. Oh. Um, this remarkably beautiful creature right here is the biggest pain in the bum when you're having a barbecue. Because, and, and this goes to show you something, it's very, very smart. And it goes to show you, we are so afraid of crocs and snakes in Australia, but this guy, this guy has serrated teeth like a shark. He has claws that are equal to the talons on an eagle. I can tell you now, those claws can go right through your flesh like that. He actually has a mild venom, so if he bites down on Christian right now, Christian will start to bleed profusely, and I'll laugh my pants off. Um, and he has a tail, which is really hard and quite serrated. They can actually smash you with that tail and cut your body. So this wild creature right here, whenever you talk about dangerous animals in Australia, it doesn't even rate. Because the point he's also got is a really clever brain, and he is good at problem solving. And the one problem he's solved is stay as far away from humans as you possibly can. So they hear and see you coming along before you hear and see them, and they stay as far away from you as they can. When he opens his mouth, you can see it doesn't look like he has any teeth. Don't let that fool you. The teeth are actually hidden up inside the gums. So when they bite down, the teeth drop down, cause a lot of damage. 
Now, these guys here, you may encounter them when you're um, having a, a barbecue or a picnic because they use that long tongue to find smell and they are a scavenger. They will eat dead things on the side of the road. So imagine how good a steak sandwich smells, all right? If you feed them, they will not leave you alone. And once one gets fed, the other ones, which you didn't see in the bush, will join in. Because <laughs> nobody cares about you, but they all care about each other. And you go, what? You just getting one of those? I'm getting one too. And as funny as it sounds, I've never experienced it, but I have met people that have experienced a group of goers come out of them and just start. And once they do, you just go pack up and go. There's no, no, no reason with them. Do not try to scare them, all right? Because when you scare a goer, their first reaction is to climb the first thing in front of them. Now, I often refer to them as a tree goer because when they are worried, they do scare them off a tree because they don't look where they're going. I, I once panicked a goer and he climbed a tree stump. Straight to the top of the tree stump and went, oh, hang on. <laughs> so they don't look, which means if you're in the way and someone goes, oh, scares the goer, you may have that thing on your head. Not as cute as it sounds. So, so goers are not out to get you, but they can hurt you inadvertently. And if you, in very popular campsites and, and, and picnic areas, they do come in. Not here in Canberra, they're very rare here in Canberra, they do exist, very rare. But certainly the further you go towards the coast, the more likely you might see them. Beautiful creatures, when they walk past you, they don't look scary because they're not afraid of you. They walk along like this, they walk along like they're <laughs> in the place, because they basically do. And as much as you're looking at him and go, oh, you're beautiful, he's looking back at you and saying, touch me, I'll kill you. <laughs> so they teach us an important lesson. And the final word for today, they also teach us how important all of our animals are in Australia. Because the biggest crocodile starts his life out by eating the smallest frogs. And we start losing those smaller animals, we lose the bigger ones. Um, this amazing creature right here is probably one of our biggest and most dangerous land predators in Australia, but relies on termites. They actually, you'll see them when you bush one big mound of dirt, actually termite mounds. These guys uh, lay eggs, they take about 60 days to hatch and they do not nest, so they do not protect their own eggs. So the only way their eggs can survive without supervision for 60 days is they come up with these giant mounds of dirt and when there's enormous claws, they crack the side of it open, it's like concrete, lay their eggs inside the soft centre and then wait while the termites repair the mound, sometimes up to three or four days. Then when the mound is repaired, the mum wanders off and leaves them and the babies incubate inside that little uh, above ground incubator, firmness thing there, and, then, and it actually warms up, eggs hatch. This is where it gets remarkable. Mum returns 60 days later, digs them back out again. So, my mum left me in a shopping mall. So, um, <laughs> it was deliberate at the police. Anyway, um, these guys here are beautiful, amazing creatures, but need something so small as a termite to survive. We lose termites, we lose goannas. It's quite amazing how delicate our ecosystem is. Um, but more importantly, it is amazing how much you can enjoy that, visiting them here in Australia, um, seeing them, uh, appreciating them, and staying safe. Even the most venomous snakes in the world are completely harmless if you just stay away from them, all right? So, guys, I um, hope you enjoyed meeting some of our animals. Um, what we're going to do right now is we're going to put this guy away because we don't trust him for touching. <laughs> uh, at our reptile zoo, we actually have two goannas that you can come up to and uh, they're working at the moment because it's school holidays. Um, uh, they're quite big lizards that tend to wander around the gardens and they're really beautiful, get a lot of them around. Throwing lizards live further north. When they see you, they tend to hide, pretend they're not there, but if they see your eyes looking at them and they know that you've made eye contact, then it's all over. So all they'll do then is they'll jump on the ground, they'll stand up on their back legs and they'll show you this display, right? I'll put it out, I'll kiss at you, carry on, dance around a bit, and if you run, I will chase you. Okay, and they do, because I, I have met new, and too many people for it to be alive who have run from these guys and been chased. The funniest thing about it is, though, they're about as dangerous as a guinea pig. You know? <laughs> so they come running, you stood your ground, what are you doing? You keep, I don't know! You probably keep going down the road. Because they've got a pretty good set of teeth, the only thing they can fit in their mouth is your finger or your nose. So don't poke them or kiss them, and you'll be okay. Alright, so they do get up, they do run, they look pretty scary, but they're totally harmless. In fact, you just go, well, they're not. <laughs> I know. Um, but it does give you a classic example of, of how these animals can, can um, bluff you. But like a shingle back to the of two heads, bluff is what the game is. Snakes do the same thing. So this guy's kind of cool, I'm just going to leave him out there. You guys are going to touch him all leave him So, um, any other questions for me? Anyone want to ask me about uh, local wildlife? Oh, yes.